we doing blokes and blokettes? So in this video, I'm reintroducing you to Abby, my Audi S3. She's a beauty. I really, really enjoy her. I love driving her. Uh, she makes me smile in a different way than the Cube, uh, because this girl is exciting. So I put back on her a racing line induction kit. I also put on her <coughs> Miltec downpipe and exhaust, which is a British company. Both of them are British companies. Neither of them are affiliated with me. I love their products. And I had the privilege of dealing with Racing Line Canada, which is their distributor over here in Montreal. And the owner is really, really decent. And he helped me out a couple of years ago. Um, and he also helped me out with this particular video. So I had forgotten that a couple of O-rings were broken and he shipped them out to me very, very quickly. I will shut up after this brief intro. We will get right into it. See you soon. You're through to Oil Works. I'm the Baldy Brit Bloke, and this is my YouTube channel. So, what I'm going to do is... Using a paint marker to mark a couple of reference points, so then when my mechanic welds it back up, it aligns perfectly. It's lipping oily. Lipping oily. Alright, here goes. Woo! I feel it all hitting my arms, it's flipping off. We're inside. Carefully, almost surgically, nibbling around the top of the catalytic converter with a thin, thin 4 inch angle grinder blade. Until this happens. Back of the net. Well, there it is. Holy flipping jumping. What you're going to see here is a pretty badly mashed up cat. This has got really, really hot. You may not be able to see it properly, but this is all honeycomb. And that's actually broken down here. It's completely broken down. Trying to get a drill bit. Try drilling it out first, and then we'll have to see about a replacement. Ah. Oi, oi, congratulations, it's a boy. I don't know if you can see that. But that is absolutely saturated with oil. There's, there's not even any, oh there is a faint bit of light going through. Looks like there's not any here. That's... Goodness, there's a lot of oil in here. Woo! After a quick clean up of the internals, I zipped her off to the mechanics. Baby girl, let's have a look at ya. Oh, there's a lot of air coming out there. Woo! Ha ha ha! Look at this! There's our problem. She has spat out. exhaust sensor so I'm not too sure how that's happened huh. but at least I know what the problem is now got to be quite gentle with those because I think they're fragile what a laugh, eh? so this is the exhaust side of the turbo just here just this little bit that's the clamp I've got to undo and this is the turbine and the inlet side that's the bit that went all pear shaped. The impeller or the spindle that the impeller spins on snapped and the impeller tipped to the side on her. Uh, that was my fault just because I hadn't had the tune set up properly. Picked the pipe up the next day, all nicely welded and cleaned and re oiled the racing line filter that night. So we're taking it off just here, this little black thing. This little black piece is coming off and then all the way back here 
this box is coming off, this box is coming off, and I've got a new pipe to put here to go underneath to here just to make it look a bit more pretty. Um, and hopefully, when I've done that, the exhaust will have cooled down enough for me to jack her up and start tackling that because that is going to be a couple of hours' work at least. Mm, more than that, probably four or five for me, maybe even more than that. All right, that's enough of the waffling. Let's get on with removing this induction kit and air filter. Unscrew the top of the air filter box. Slacken and move the air filter pipe clamp. Now for the front part of the OEM induction kit. Bit of gentle jiggery pokery later, and voila, the OEM air filter system is coming out. Boom boom, look at that. Gotta have the flag flying even on German cars, eh? Bosh. How proud am I? With that off, now I'm going to tackle the turbo inlet. I'm just going to show you quickly what I've been up to. That was where the intake is detached to, and it's an elbow. This goes in like that. And this is a restrictive OEM one. And the other one has got a wider mouth or outlet into here, so there's less restriction. And the other thing that I'm playing with and removing is this thing down here. This is the turbo muffler and what that does is that quiets the sound of the turbo. It dis disturbs the air as it's sucked in from the intercooler. The thing I'm replacing it with, with is a racing line turbo muffler delete and it has no baffles in it. It allows the air to just go whistling straight through there. Oi oi! Is she good looking or what? Now with the muffler delete installed, time to carefully install the new racing line 90 degree intake elbow. This is where the magic starts to happen. Cracking on, I'm going to start to install the Racing Line air filter box. And just, just quickly, this is the difference in size of the pipe. There's none of this corrugating, so there's no restriction or distortion of the airflow. All these little improvements, eh? Just to make her breathe easier. Time to install the air filter. What I like about it is it looks 
close enough to the original factory one. Except it's now got this extra section across here to get all the cold air in. Sweet. So that is all sorted. All fixed in place. Now I'm going to jack her up. All I'm doing now is removing the drip tray from underneath. And here's a pair of brightly coloured plimsolls with some pale English legs in them. To make it possible to hit, swap out the downpipe, there's a little aluminium heat shield just above the drive shaft that needs to be removed. There's a couple of hex head bolts in this and it's a pain in the arras to get to. Eventually I figured it out it was best to take off the passenger side wheel and use a long reach socket bit to get to it. Once I'd sorted that, it only took a couple of minutes. What follows is several hours of flopping and wriggling around underneath Abby's belly like a piece of freshly clunked roadkill waiting to be put out of misery. Here's me doing my best impression of a snake. Loads and loads of hard to get two bolts and undoing the drive shaft so that I can get the exhaust downpipe out. Sorry, the flipping camera just turned off. And I am not getting out and checking that it's in focus and pointing the right way. Not now. Ah, shit. Ow. Just want to give you a quick glimpse of what it is I've been battling with. A lot of the problem is I can't get the car up high enough. Now, I will just add here that my mechanic very kindly offered me use of one of his hoists, but I feel a bit uneasy about doing that because I'm I take so flipping long to mechanics that I probably need to be there for a couple of days and he has to use his hoists. So I'm I'm undoing here that that bolt. That's a drive shaft bolt. And the problem I was thought I was faced with was trying to hold this to stop it turning around while I undid that bolt. So what I've done is got some pipe grips on there and clamped them. And that seems to have done it. Now it's silly of me because I should have done that earlier. But I didn't think of it until I had a break about 20, well about an hour ago now. I went out for a quick drive. And it was only when I'd started driving and walked away from this for a few minutes that I figured out, hmm, try this you muppet. So it's worked, or it seems to have done with the first one. So I have three more of these bolts to undo. So I'm going to get this one out completely. Then I'm going to turn the drive shaft to the next one, which is up the top at the moment. Can't see it because of the shadow. And there's one here down the bottom. So with the drive shaft unbolted, I was eventually able to remove the downpipe. There we go, now I know how a, um, is it a paediatrician? I don't know, feels delivering the baby. Whew, what a flipping nightmare. That's been hours of labour. No offence to the women that are watching this that have had children. It's just as hard on us guys watching. Getting the replacement downpipe into place was relatively easy. Do you know why I've come to it? That we normally call cars girls, like, come on girl, good girl, or here she is. Because, they always change their mind. Cars always change their mind. Like you just think, I just think I'm getting somewhere and I'm gonna get a part fixed. And then she changes her mind and I can't do it. To approach it from a different direction. Know what I'm saying? Oi oi! Next morning, 
and no morning ever starts properly or is complete until I've got a couple of cups of tea inside me. It's Monday of the long <clears throat> Labour Day weekend. I had hoped to have this girl complete yesterday and as always with my plans they rapidly go to pot. So bear with me, we're going to get this tied up today. I made good progress yesterday evening, worked until about, oh I'm not too sure, 11, 11.30 or something and started actually putting it all back together. The downpipe is back on, it's just loose so I can still move it around a couple of mil if I need to. It's all connected back up to the brackets, the little heat shields have all been put back and bolted on or screwed on as the case may be and I'll be working underneath her today <coughs> putting the centre pipe on and the muffler delete pipe so that I can figure out where I need to cut the back box off it shouldn't be too difficult um, I've got plenty of clamps I've got some sawzall bits so I'll shut up and let's crack this out because I really really hope to be able to take her out for a test run later before I crawl under Abby there's something else I need to do I am just about to reinstall the exhaust sensor I'm not a very happy camper whoever installed this after the replacement turbo was fitted very kindly cross threaded it for me and it was barely held into the ex exhaust downpipe so what I'm going to do now is clean it up with a file and with a junior hacksaw blade because um, I don't want it cross threading again not into this exhaust because these are quite expensive thank goodness it only took 10 minutes or so to clean it up this is a sensor socket this is what I'm going to be using to put the exhaust sensor back in I've cleaned the thread up best as I possibly can, it looks okay um, so I'm hopeful that there won't be any uh, issues with putting it in and it's staying in there long term because I don't want to buy a new one of these back underneath Colleen cranking up the drive shaft bolts to the correct tension before installing the rest of the exhaust sweet that's one done okay one down, two to go Life in the fast lane. Whatever. Now time to crack on with the exhaust. Okay, baby. Let's do this. Now I've made the decision to cut this exhaust pipe with the orange angle grinder. And the reason being is that the only blade that I have for the saws are, they are extra long and I'm not easy but I want snag snags something else so I figure I'll have more control with the angle grinder there are a lot of sparks but hopefully it all goes better and a bit of wiggling and jiggling later the back box is out now to install the centre section of the exhaust and the res delete. After a couple of battles with aligning the exhaust correctly, I won the war. I discovered that all the exhaust clamps had been returned by whoever took the exhaust off. Which is going to cause a bit of a problem later, but that's okay, I can fix that. So I just check the other clamps and make sure everything's tight and road test time. Oh, I almost forgot, the V-band clamp between the turbo outlet and the downpipe. Got to tighten that. I am not dressed for it in the slightest, but I'm going to take her out. Alright, moment of truth. Boom, boom. She does not sound happy. And she's punting out a bit of um, exhaust smoke there, look. So, I'll be honest, she sounds absolutely rough. But I think what's happening is there's a slight exhaust blow just here halfway down. And it's screwing with the acoustics. 
And it's just burning off a little bit of residue of oil and grease and stuff that was in there from when the turbo blew up. So she'll be punting out a bit of smoke for a while. I didn't record any... I didn't record any drive-bys or anything. There was a lot of walkers and cyclists on the road that I go to. Um, and she's, she was spewing out quite a bit of oil, burning off the oil that was in the, pot, the exhaust system from when the turbo went. I tried to clean out as much of it as I could, but there's still quite a lot left in it, and she was smoking badly. And every time I blipped the throttle, she sent out another puff of blue smoke. So that'll take a couple of journeys, probably, a couple of little runarounds to burn it all off. Um, yeah, and I didn't want to upset anyone. Particularly with her sounding like she does, she sounds really sick. <laughs> Took her up to Mini Muffler in Toronto this morning uh, to get them to weld up that joint because they could do it right away. I'm not too sure if this can pick it up properly with this camera mic, but it's a really nice little bubble. So, get in, sit down, strap up, shut up, and hold on. Happy's a bit more rorty now. Naughty and rorty. information about me now, it suddenly occurred to me while I'm watching this last clip that I still drive exactly the same way as I was trained at 17 years old. I was taught to drive by an ex-cop that trained the Thames Valley Motorway Police um, and he taught me to read the road, always looking ahead so it doesn't necessarily mean I'm following the lines. And he taught me a bunch of other exciting stuff as well about like driving 150 mile an hour on the highway, pursuits and things like that just took me back and I realised that I still drive the same way I was trained so that might be of interest to some of you if not apologise for the useless crap in myself if you like the content hit that like button please subscribe please put on your notification bells and please comment and that Blokes, blokettes, girls and boys brings us to the end of this next video. Thank you so very, very much for watching.